You might think this fruit is bad, but it's actually great for diabetics and helps control blood sugar levels. In this video, I'll discuss nine fruits often wrongly labeled as forbidden by many professionals and fruit critics. This has caused some confusion. I'm sure you're avoiding many fruits on this list, thinking they're bad for diabetes when they're actually excellent. It's trendy online to fearmonger about fruits because of fructose, but in reality, Fructose can be consumed. It's only excessive fructose that's harmful. Eating 200 of these fruits I'll mention would be too much fructose. Now I'll explain this classification. Let's look at the nine best fruits you might think are forbidden. The criteria will be simplified. So on this list, I'm going to include net carbs. But what are net carbs? They're carbs minus fiber, as fiber is also a carb type. But fiber carbs aren't absorbed by the body. When checking food or fruit, look at net carbs, not total carbs. You need to subtract the fiber amount. For example, if there's 20 carbs, but 11 are fiber, the net carbs are 9. 20 minus 11. Do this math, or you'll have wrong info about foods. I'll start with papaya, a fruit you might think is forbidden. Papaya has 7 net carbs per 100 G. Great for diabetics. In other words, if you eat papaya, a portion of it won't have a big impact on your blood sugar as it has a controlled amount of fructose, carbs, and fiber, which aids digestion and helps control blood sugar levels in your body. So, number one on our list here is papaya. Did you think papaya was off limits? Many think so. In my consultations, diabetics often say they avoid papaya because it's sweeter. They were told if a fruit tastes sweet, diabetics can't eat it. That's a big mistake. Papaya is great with only 7 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. Note these values, as I'll later discuss 6 fruits that can raise blood sugar more. These aren't fruits that lower blood sugar. On the contrary, you need to be more careful. Got it? Let's talk about the best and worst fruits. Many think the worst are actually good. It's quite confusing. That's why many diabetics struggle to control their blood sugar levels. With proper knowledge and correct information, not just any info, it becomes easier. The second fruit, often considered off-limits, is watermelon. You thought it was forbidden until now, didn't you? If this video is helpful, hit like. Let's aim for 10,000 likes. Not subscribed? Subscribe and hit the bell for more health videos. Why is watermelon considered one of the best fruits? Because per 100 gram serving, you get only 7 grams of net carbs. Many wrongly claim watermelon has high glycemic carbs that spike blood sugar. Watermelon's glycemic index is 72. What does this mean? How much does a food raise your blood sugar when you eat it? The higher the number, the higher the glycemic index. So watermelon does have carbs that raise blood sugar more with a higher GI. But the key point is that the amount of this carb is actually small. As you can see, per 100 grams, you only get 7 grams of carbs. So yes, watermelon is indeed a good fruit for people with diabetes. Besides the benefits for blood pressure, antioxidants, and vitamins, eating watermelon also hydrates you, as it's mostly water. So, is watermelon really a forbidden fruit? No, you won't eat three whole melons, but a serving or two is actually good for diabetics due to its low carb content. Of course, eating too much will raise blood sugar, okay? Number three, peaches. Many consider peaches forbidden, but here's info that contradicts what most people say. Peaches are allowed with eight grams of net carbs per 100 grams. Remember, just looking at the nutrition label won't help. You need to do the calculation I taught earlier. So peaches are allowed, they're sweet, but many avoid them thinking they're bad for diabetics. That's not true, okay? Number four is oranges. Oranges are great for diabetics, though many think they're not due to their sweetness. I'm talking about eating whole oranges with the fiber. This way, the carbs are better absorbed, digestion improves, and you get all the vitamins, like vitamin C. Per 100 grams of orange, there are 9 grams of carbs. Remember, this is about eating the fruit. Orange juice is one of the worst choices for diabetics. Diabetics should generally avoid fruit juices. Why? You lose fiber, concentrate carbs, making it sweeter with a higher glycemic index. Exactly what diabetics shouldn't have. Just to give you an idea, a small 200 milliliters glass of orange juice contains about 20 to 25 grams of carbs. So it's much better to eat an orange, which has only 9 grams of net carbs, as it'll keep you fuller, prevent overeating later, and avoid excess calories and carbs, 
thus helping you in this process. It's always worth eating the orange with its pulp. The fifth fruit, often wrongly considered off-limits but excellent for diabetics, is melon. Per 100 grams of melon, there are 7 grams of net carbs, which is great for controlling blood sugar levels. Many people avoid melon, but know that it's an excellent fruit if you're diabetic. The sixth fruit, one of the best for diabetics and one of the world's best foods, is strawberries. For every 100 grams of strawberries, we have just 5 grams of carbohydrates. Strawberries also contain anthocyanin, well studied for health benefits, rich in antioxidants, and part of red fruits. There are many studies on berries, especially strawberries, for health benefits. Strawberries have an extra perk, besides all I've mentioned. The carbs they contain, which are few, have a low glycemic index. So they won't spike your blood sugar, they'll actually help you. I'm a big fan of strawberries. How about you? And fruit number seven is the blackberry. This one's often overlooked. I love blackberries in certain regions. I know they can be hard to find, but in some areas they're quite common. You can enjoy blackberries if you like them. For every 100 grams, there are only 5 grams of net carbs. That's great for people with diabetes. Blackberries are also packed with antioxidants that fight free radicals. Many claim blackberries can fight cancer. That's not true, okay? Blackberries are for getting antioxidants. Studies show people who eat more antioxidants have a lower risk of developing cancer. So it acts as a protective factor not a treatment. Don't fall for the hype about blackberries curing cancer. That's why. Antioxidants help reduce your cancer risk. Got it? Number eight is pears. Pears are often overlooked. Pears have fiber. Per 100 grams of pear, we have nine grams of net carbs. It's also great for diabetics. Number nine, another excellent fruit for diabetics, is guava. Per 100 grams of guava, we have eight grams of net carbs. The remaining carbs are low glycemic index. They won't significantly impact your blood sugar levels as long as you eat in moderation. Always remember that. Now, which fruits should you be most careful with? There's a scientific basis behind this that I'll explain. You'll compare to understand this list better. Once you get it, choosing the best foods becomes easy. What are the five fruits? The first fruit I want to highlight is dates. Do you like eating dates? Dates, per 100 grams, contain 68 grams of net carbs. Look at this. After subtracting fiber, it's 68 grams. Compare that to strawberries, which have 5, or guava, which has 8. See how 100 grams of dates, the same amount, I'm talking about the same quantity here, has a much higher amount of net carbs. It'll impact your blood sugar more. Many defend dates, saying they're healthy. Yes, they have benefits. I acknowledge that. But I'm focusing on blood sugar control here. You need to be careful with dates. Number two is mango. Mango contains 14 grams of net carbs per 100 grams. If you eat the same amount of cantaloupe, you'll get twice the net carbs. It'll also have a bigger impact on your blood sugar. It's better to eat papaya instead of mango, for instance. Remember to be very careful with your choices. It's not that it's forbidden. If you really like it, you can have some. But no, it'll affect your blood sugar levels more. Number three is banana. Per 100 G of banana, we have 21 G of net carbs. You'd need to eat three times more papaya to match 100 G of banana. 100 G of papaya equals 100 G of banana in carbs. Net carbs impact blood glucose levels. People say bananas are healthy and have antioxidants. Remember, let's stick to the video's theme. We're focusing on controlling blood sugar levels. Diabetics need to be careful with bananas. That's why I said, 100 G has 21 G of carbs. And number four is grapes. Grapes are rich in antioxidants and polyphenols. If you're diabetic, be extra cautious with grapes. Every 100 G of grapes has 18 G of net carbs. It'll also have a bigger impact on blood sugar levels. You can eat fewer grapes than those from the first list if you prefer. Got it? Number five. Another fruit diabetics need to watch out for is the fig. Every 100 grams of figs contains 17 grams of carbohydrates. I'll mention other fruits that also require more attention. These fruits are rare, but very common in some regions. They are jackfruit, custard apple, and sugar apple. Diabetics should also be cautious with these fruits. Per 100 grams, these fruits have about 20 to 22 grams of net carbs. So, if you're diabetic, you need to be extra careful. What other fruit would you like to know about? 
Remember, I'll always answer with the net carb count. That's what really matters for controlling blood sugar levels. Ask questions here. I always love to read and respond. Tell me which city you're watching from, what part of the world. I'm speaking from Porto Alegre. Now, I've got a video recommendation for you to check out. It's a video where I talked about vegetables. Did you know some veggies can raise blood sugar levels and others can help lower glucose? In that video, I ranked the best veggies for diabetics. Take care. Catch you next time.